amazing grace. Amen. You may be seated. 
And so for a few moments this morning, we ask that you would pray with us and think on the thought, a great homecoming. Amen. A great homecoming. And you know, when, when, when you think about that word homecoming, it, 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 it is a great event, isn't it? regardless of, of where the homecoming is, because we realize that in a homecoming, it's a time for you to be happy, isn't it? Amen. There are, there, there, there are uh, great things and big times that people have uh, at homecomings. And, and, and in some cases and in some uh, aspects, when there are people that have differences of opinions and, and, and differences of ways of living and all types of things, uh, 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 when that homecoming comes about, nobody really concerned about those differences anymore, are they? Not for that little time. Everybody, everybody comes together to enjoy one another. And we realize and understand that homecomings are, are celebrated by many different people in many different ways of life and, and in society. Because we realize that, 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 that like this year, this, this year, 2020 is, the, Lord have mercy, the 30th year since I graduated from high school. And we know that in high school, when there's a homecoming, there's a big party that goes on in it. There, there, there's moms and, and there's garters and, and, and people come back from all over the United States. Some, in my uh, case, with my uh, uh, classmates, some of them have to come from overseas because they work overseas. But they, we all come together to enjoy a football game nine tenths out of ten, especially now Midland High is going to lose, but... We still come together. <laughs> we still come together to enjoy that homecoming. And, 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 you know, after the football game is over, there's usually a big celebration where, where everybody comes together and talk about what's been going on in each other's lives from time to time and, and how things have been going on since the last time you saw one another. But you also have to remember, there's a homecoming in the church as well. Am I right, y'all? Because there are so many that are out there in the world that, that, that know at some point in time, uh, mama, daddy, big mama, big papa, or uh, 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 any uncle, somebody made sure that you were on your way to church. Am I right? Amen. And, and as you were a child growing up in church, there have been those... Uh, that, 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 that once they became adults, decided that, that it was time for them to leave church and come to church only when they felt like it, or even if they don't feel like it, don't come at all. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, uh, when we as Christians have a homecoming, it takes on a whole different light and a whole different aspect than that homecoming uh, 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 for high school or, or, or for any other type of event. When we have our homecoming here at church, it is an opportunity just like with school where people who may have been past members can come together and, 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 and enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Amen. But yet it's still this other homecoming is a homecoming that, that once you have strayed away from the Lord, you have the opportunity to come back to him. Am I right? Amen. We have the opportunity to, 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 instead of staying out there in the fields of sin, mm. to be able to come back in and be a part of the body and the, and, and the family of the Lord. Amen? And when you think about it, this is the same situation. And this is the story that Jesus was bringing up in our text. Yes. Because if you start back at the first verse in chapter 15, it lets us understand that Jesus is inviting the tax collectors and the sinners 
And all the people that, 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 that don't know who, who don't know the word of God, don't know what Jesus could do for them. He was inviting all of them to come with him. And what is it that the Pharisees, the, the church people, say to him? Look at this man. He's sitting here and he'll eat and, and be all around all these sinners and, 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 and do all types of things. And you know, it is time for us as Christians to realize and understand that the church is not a haven for saints. But it is a hospital for sinners. This is the place that we shouldn't want to invite all sinners in. Amen, y'all? This should be the place where if they can find out that they were, may have been blind. All right. But thank God now they can see. They, they, they need to realize that, that it doesn't matter where you have come from. Tell it. it does not matter what your background may have been. It does not matter how many sins that you have committed in your life. Right. The Lord is still saying, if you let me in, I will come in and sup with you and you with me and everything will be all right. Do I have some witnesses here? Amen. And see, that's why Jesus had to get them to understand, man, y'all not getting the point. You as church people are not getting the point. Instead of you being around the sinners, instead of you being uh, around the ones who really need your help, all you want to do is sit up in the temples and the synagogues and, and read the laws and, and read the Torah and all that type of thing. You're not worried about the people that are on the outside of the building. And that's why he had to start out with a parable that said what? If a man had a hundred sheep and one of those sheep ended up being lost. Won't that man leave those other 99 and go out and find that one and search until he finds that one. And once he finds that one, he will lay it up on his shoulders and bring it back to the fold and he'll get all his neighbors together and say, y'all, let's celebrate. Let's have us a good time. Why? Because that one sheep that was lost has now been found. Right. And he says heaven is the same way. Right. Every time one sinner comes in for repentance, heaven rejoices. And that's the way it should be in our lives. When we can try our best right. to bring somebody in from the fields of sin, right. we should rejoice. Amen. Because you think about it, he had to give the lesson about that prodigal son. Right. And we all know that lesson, don't we? About how the youngest son wanted what was his. Right. Wanted his birthright. Yeah. And, and as soon as he got what was his. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he traveled uh, and went out to a foreign land, didn't he? Yeah. And what do you think it is when a Christian or somebody who has been in church for a long time decides to leave the fall? They're going into a foreign land, aren't they? Right. They're going into a land filled with sin. They're going to a land filled with hell heartache. They are going into a land filled with pain and, and, and backbiting and, and people talking about it. But the Bible says that this man, once he got into that foreign land, well, he spent all that he had on bad living, on rowdiest living, on, on living the way he thought was right. right. And he had a whole bunch of friends with him as long as he had money, didn't he? Right. But as soon as that money ran out, he was out there all alone by himself. And that, see, that's the way the devil works, y'all. The devil will get you out there. And, and he'll make you feel like everything is going real good. Yeah, I, 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 I got a good job where I can pay my house payment. I got, I got a lot of friends around me. I, 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 I can wear nice clothes and, and I can do everything because I've done this on my own. Well. Nobody else had anything to do with this. But as soon as situations start getting rough, Kelly. as soon as situations start getting tough, well. see if any of them friends that were sitting there leeching off of you going to be there for you to leech off of them. See if those friends are going to still have their hands uh, out to shake your hand when you don't have nothing for them. Mm. See if those friends are going to really, really be your friend when you have nothing to offer them. 
Because the Bible lets us know that the, that the, that the devil is one who, who, who is a faker and a shaker. Am I right, y'all? And, and he'll make you feel like everything is going real good. But then you get to a point where you just knock down and out. Just as this man was. He was knocked down and out. He didn't have anything. He, 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 he was working in the, in, in the fields with the swines, wasn't it? It, it wasn't. And the Bible said that he, he, he would rather and enjoyed eating the same slop that the pigs ate. And think about it. You know, you know, you know, we all eat pork and we all enjoy pigs. But y'all, y'all got to realize a pig, a hog is a dirty animal. Am I, am I right, y'all? You throw a dead, now this is just being honest. You throw a dead body in there with some hogs. Give, him, give it a little time. Next thing you know, it won't be nothing left. No, no, no evidence of anything. Why? Because that hog is going to eat that body up. Right. The hog like being in slop. The hog like being in mud. Am I right? And isn't that the way it is in sin? Yes. Sin will knock you down and have you feeling like you wallowing around in the mud. You down in the mire clay. You not on that solid rock. Well. But just as this son did, mm. he said, wait a minute. I can come to remembrance and think about it. Wait, my, my, I'm sitting here in this hog pen. Well, eating what the hogs eat. Mm. Living like a hog. But I got a father, hey, who his servants live better than this. Right. And all I have to do is head back home mm. and, and just tell him I'm not even worthy of being your son. But, 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 but if you just let me live uh, as one of your servants, well, everything right. will be all right. And the Bible lets us know that he gave, began to move on that journey. Well, turning around and going back home. Hmm. And see, that's the thing about it. Uh, we as church people and we as Christians and people who know who the Lord is, who have turned and went a long way off, uh, we have to realize uh, that there comes a point in time uh, in our lives uh, that we need to turn back around uh, and go back to where we came from. Uh, leave all that living uh, alone uh, that is not good for us. Uh, move out from those old friends. Uh, move out from that old way of life uh, and turn around uh, good God Almighty uh, and come back uh, uh, to our first love. Uh, and then uh, our text says uh, that when uh, the young man uh, was still afar uh, off, uh, he hadn't made it to, to where he wanted to make it. Uh, the father looked out uh, and he saw a little, just a little beam of something in his eye. Yeah. And it was something about that young man or about the image that he saw. It may have been the walk. It may have been the way he swung his hands. But he realized that it was his son. And the Bible says that the old man took off running. And he wasn't concerned uh, about waiting uh, for the sun to get to him. Uh, he ran on out uh, and met the sun. Uh, and he wrapped his arms around him uh, and held on to him tight. Uh, and as uh, soon uh, as the sun said, uh, I'm not worthy uh, to be called your son anymore. Uh, but I'll uh, just be a servant. Uh, the father wasn't even concerned about that. Uh, he said, sir, to his servants, uh, go and get him a robe. Uh, wrap him up and let people know whose he is. Uh, put that insignia, that ring uh, on his finger. Uh, and put some shoes on his feet. Uh, go out uh, and get that fatty cat. And kill it uh, And let's have us a good old barbecue uh, Because my son uh, Who was dead uh, Is alive again uh, And my son uh, That was lost uh, Is now found uh, So Jesus uh, Was trying to get them to understand uh, It's not about uh, 
a sitting uh, all together uh, in a congregation uh, and not worrying uh, about those outside of the door. Uh, right. We need to bring them in uh, from the fields of sin. Uh, quit thinking uh, that we as church people uh, are better than anybody else. Uh, thinking uh, just because we walk up in here uh, and there are sinners out there uh, that they don't deserve uh, to be brought in uh, to the family of God. Uh, they deserve uh, everything uh, that we have. Because the Bible lets us know that God does not want anybody to die and go to sick hell. He wants everybody to be able to repent of their sins, be converted, and let's all have a home coming together. The Bible says that once he comes back again, now, he's coming uh, to receive all uh, who have been a part of his family, uh, yeah. who have trusted in him, uh, and who have co-held on, uh, regardless of all the bad things that may be going on. Uh, held on uh, through the police brutality. Uh, held on uh, through all the hate and the racial injustice. Uh, held on uh, regardless of how people may have talked about you and did all manners of evil against you held on when it seemed like all bad things were trying to knock you down you just kept holding on and because of that holding on one day he's coming back again to receive us unto himself that where he is we may be also but the song says when we all get to heaven what a time, what a time, what a time. And that is going to be the great time. But until we make it to that point, I just have to say to all those who may have turned their back on God, just go back to where you left him and he'll be right there waiting for you. Because he is God And beside him there is none other He will be your way maker He will be your heart fixer He will be your mind regulator If you just hold on To his unchanging hand If you have backslid And feel like well I've done so much wrong in my life That God cannot forgive Forgive me. Well, I'm here to let you know if he can forgive a old wretched sinner like me, he can forgive you. There is nothing that God won't forgive. He will open up his heart. He will open up. If you open up your heart to him, he will open up his hands and give you his hand. And you will be able to put that ring on your finger and be able to be an heir of the, of the family of God. If you just hold on and hold out and there will be a great homecoming. Now, if we will just do what we are supposed to do and continue to let this world know that Jesus hung, bled, and died, and he provided a way out. There are so many out there in the world that want to say that Jesus is not real. They want to say God does not exist. But I have to say this, if God is dead, what makes the flowers move? If God is dead, what makes summer come in June? If God is dead, who is listening and who answers prayer? That's why I'm glad I know. I said I'm glad I know. Uh -huh. I'm glad I know that he lives. He lives. Hallelujah. He lives today. And all we have to do is continue to trust in him. And we will be a part of that great homecoming. We know that he is coming back again. The Bible lets us know that all these things that are going on 
have already been foretold. And all we have to do is read our Bibles. There are so many out there that don't even want to pick this book up and just look through it. There are so many that have the Bible and just have it sitting there. Never read it. Never study it. But if they did, they'd realize wars and rumors of wars. Mothers against daughters. Fathers against sons. Nations rising up against nations. It's all in the book. And it says that that is the beginning of the sorrow. But what does it say for Christians? Don't give up. Hold on. Don't, 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 don't lose your faith. You may have to go through some tough times. You may have to, you may have to, 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 to sit in jail. You may, you may feel like the, that, 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 that the police may have their, 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 their knees on your neck. But just hold on. Because he's coming back again. And it's going to be a great homecoming. Great meeting in the sky. And I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of that meeting. In the middle of the air. And all we have to do is come home. Turn away from our wicked sins. And say, I repent. I realize the bad that I've done. But I also know that God sent his son to die for me. And all I have to do is live my life according to the way he wants us to live. Try every day to be better than we were the day before. So that people will be able to see Jesus in us. And if there's one here today who is out of the ark of safety, we invite you to come to be a part of the family of God. And if there's one that will be listening to this or watching this, if you feel within yourself and in your heart that you're not meeting the standards that Jesus has, just bow your heads, humble your hearts and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need you in my life. I realize that your son hung, bled and died for my sins and I'm ready to come home. And he will accept you. Because the Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you are saved. So as this number is extended, we invite you to come away from God.
Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.